Today we're doing a deep dive into Fusion 360 and we're going to model this complex part. Now there are a few techniques in use here that you may not have seen before, so stick around and maybe you'll learn something new. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. If you saw last week's video, then you know I made this, which is a bracket to mount the torch lead down to the top of the motor here on my CNC plasma table. The idea is that it will screw down to the top of the motor here and then provide a place to anchor the torch lead and the other cables that are flopping around so that they come up into a nice neat bundle and we can get some decent wire management on this. Now this is a pretty complicated part. It's uh, designed to fit the motor, which is relatively straightforward, but then it's got a bunch of compound curves. It's got this curved rounded channel to fit the cord. It's got curved uh, slots through it for zip ties. It's got more curves on the back. It's opened up and skeletonized and has uh, fillets around all the edges. And a part like this is relatively complicated uh, by the time you get it done but the tools used to model it are pretty straightforward. So today we're gonna to go into Fusion 360 and we're gonna do a deep dive on modeling this part and we're gonna walk through all the tools uh, that are used to actually create this geometry. Now, in order to get the part to fit the motor, we need dimensions off of the motor and some of them are really easy. Just grab a caliper, get the outside dimensions, get the dimensions of these uh, protrusions on the sides. Other parts of it, like measuring the curves and measuring the, uh, the radii of the fillets on this thing require a different tool. This is a set of radius gauges. And so on one end, it's got leaves with outside radius, radii on them. And on the other side, it's got leaves that have inside radii on the tip. So this one is two and a half millimeters. And so I can just sort of go through all the leaves and figure out which one fits. And I can see that the two and a half millimeter fits nice and cleanly without a gap on the outside here. And for the inside curve, the five millimeter outside radius gauge fits nice and neat in there with no gaps. So I know the radius of that is five millimeters. The radius of these outside fillets is two and a half. And so then all I need is the spacing for the screw holes. And a really easy way to determine the spacing of screw holes is to take your caliper, measure the inside diameter of one of the screw holes, then zero it out, then use the inside jaws to measure across two of the screw holes, and that will give you a direct reading. In this case, 51.08 millimeters. Uh, everything on this motor is metric. These are M3 uh, screws, screw holes, screw threads in there. So I'm pretty sure this is all metric. So this is a nominal 51 millimeters across between those two. I will go ahead and measure the rest of the dimensions on this motor and then we'll go into the computer and walk through the design of this part. This is Fusion 360 and this is the model that we need to design. Uh, this one's already done. In fact, you know, I already printed it out. You've seen it. Um, but I want to walk through how to model this. Let's take a quick tour of the features of the part. The bottom is very simple. This is just a base plate that fits on the top of the motor with four screw holes to allow it to be attached. And then the main purpose for this part existing is this curved channel to hold the plasma lead so that the plasma torch will be down here. The lead will be coming in from this side. It'll follow this nice curved transition to vertical and there are some channels in here to tie down the plasma lead so that it doesn't move around. So the channel itself is a compound curve. You can see it's shaped to the uh, shape of the cable to hold it securely, and it also makes this curve. So this surface is curving in two directions, and then these channels underneath are for zip ties to anchor the cable down. So if I come up here to inspect section analysis, and I'll just choose a flat surface in here, so we can cut the model and you can see that that zip tie channel is also curved and follows the, uh, the curve on that top surface. So there's one in the middle, there's one up here at the top, and there's one down here at the bottom. And you can see the geometry gets kind of complex, but it's actually not that hard to create. We'll walk through that here in the next few minutes. 
And then the back support is a little bit wider just to clear the uh, plastic block that's on the back of the motor. There's a channel on each side to hold the other two cables that need to come up and similar curved zip tie channels to anchor them down. And then I've just got a hole in the back here and a hole through the part, both for aesthetics and to make the part a little bit lighter and use a little bit less material. Let me create a new design and let's jump in and I'll show you how I modeled this. The first thing we need to design here is the base plate. So I will start with a sketch, put that on the XY plane and bring that up so we can look at it. Now, I know that this is symmetric in two directions, so I'm gonna start with some construction lines that I can use for mirroring. So hit L for line, X for construction, and I will just drag out and place a couple of construction lines. Now hit X again to turn off construction, and now let's just sketch out the basic shape of the motor. So this is one quarter of the motor and we need to put some curves uh, on there. So I'll choose the fillet tool. I know these two are the same and these are 2.5 millimeters. And I know this curve on the inside because I measured it is five millimeters in radius. So now we have the general shape or at least the components of the shape of one quarter of the motor with the radii on there. And the last thing we need is a hole for the screw. So hit C for circle, and I will just drag that out. I know the dimension of this, so I'll hit D, put a dimension on here of 3.4 millimeters, and that's to create a clearance hole for an M3 screw. So that is the shape of one quarter of the motor. Of course, the dimensions are not right yet. We need to mirror this first, so I will just select these parts. Now there's two ways to rubber band select. If you select down and to the right, then your rubber band box will cover parts and it will select only parts that are completely inside the box. So if I let go here, you'll see that these line segments that were not completely inside the box did not get selected. Hit escape instead, if I rubber band from the and up and to the left, then everything that the box touches will be selected. So those lines get selected when I go in that direction and that's what I want. So then I will click mirror select this vertical line as my mirror line. And now I've gone from a quarter of the motor to half of the motor. I'll do the same thing. I'll go across here, select all of this. Now that's selected my mirror line. I don't want that. So I'll hit control and click that to deselect it. And I'll do the same thing. Mirror about the horizontal mirror line. And now I have all four sides of the motor, but of course the dimensions were all wrong. So let's put on some dimensions, D for dimension, I know between the screw hole center to center in this direction is 31.5 millimeters. And in this direction is 51 millimeters. And then I know the outside dimension of the sides of these is 38. And the overall outside of the motor is 56. And then I'll just put those same dimensions on the other direction across there. And I'll just click this dimension to link the value and do the same thing in the other direction on the large dimension here, click here to link the value, enter and finish. And now we have the shape of the base plate that will fit the motor. So I'll just click here, hit extrude. I want this to be five millimeters, enter. And we have the base plate. The next thing I need to design is the upright rib that holds the torch lead. And I've gone ahead and set up some parameters that we're gonna use for this so that if it doesn't quite fit, I can just tweak the design. So I've got the torch lead diameter in here, which is 13 millimeters. I've got the cable diameter for the cables that come up the back. That's five and a half millimeters. And I've got the bend radius I wanna use for the torch lead and that's 75 millimeters. And I kind of just estimated this by playing with the cable to see how it bends. But the point of having these as parameters is so I can come back later and modify them. So I want to start with a sketch with a line that follows the center line of the torch lead cable. So I'm going to click here to create a sketch and I'm going to put it on the YZ plane. Now I, I need this sketch to be able to take dimensions off of and intersect with parts of the base plate. So I'm gonna hit P for project and I'm gonna select 
some of these lines and click OK and that puts these points into my sketch where those intersections occur. And this will make life a little bit easier for me. So let me hit L for line and let's just sketch some lines in here. I know I'm going to have a vertical face that comes up to the curve of the cable there. I know I'm going to have one that comes up the back to there. And then um, I'm also going to have a line that comes up like this so that I can uh, have, I can sketch this rib that comes up the back. So I've got some lines in there and then I want to put an arc across here, arc, three point arc, and this will be the arc that follows the center line of the cable. Now let's go ahead and start putting some dimensions on this thing. Now before we can do this, I would like this top surface on the back here to be perpendicular to this curve, but you can't you can't make something perpendicular to a curved surface in Fusion 360, so what I'll do instead is hit L for line and we'll just extend this line out. Now if I just move this back and forth, you'll see the tangent constraint appearing. Now if I click, this constraint is now here to hold that line tangent to the end of that curve. The other way you can do this, I'll put one at the other end, is just draw your line at whatever angle you want and then come back later and select the curve and that line and select tangent. And so now we have line extensions on the end that are tangent to the curve. Now let's start putting some dimensions on this. Now this is the center line of the cable and I want the outside edge of the cable to just come and touch the edge of this base plate. So I hit D for dimension. We'll go from this line to here. And so I want this to be the torch lead diameter divided by two. And I want exactly the same thing up here from here to here and I also want this to be perpendicular so if I select those two and select the perpendicular constraint great now the width of this back rib is going to be the cable diameter and I want to go ahead and put this angle at 45 degrees and then the only other thing I think that's unconstrained here, oh, we've got to put the radius here. This is the torch lead bend radius. And then the last thing we have is this height. And I am just going to pick a value, D for dimension of uh, 45 millimeters. And now we have this sketch completely constrained. Now in order to actually extrude, these sections have to be closed. So I'll just go ahead and put some lines across here. And now we have closed areas that we can extrude. So now I can just click here, hit E for extrude. I want to extrude symmetrically over a distance of the whole length. And that distance I want to be the, the torch lead diameter minus one millimeter. I want this to be slightly narrower than the torch lead so that the zip ties will come around and grip well. Turn the sketch back on and let's go ahead and extrude this back area the same way. And this will also be symmetric distance. And I want this to be, uh, based on the measurements I took, probably 22, maybe 23 millimeters. Okay, so that gives us the rough shape. Now let's cut the trough for the torch lead. So we'll create a sketch on this top surface, right click, create sketch, hit C for circle, and let's just draw a circle. D for dimension, this will be the torch lead diameter. And now we have a circle that represents that. And I can just click this area and come up here and say create sweep and for the sweep path, select this curve. And I wanna make sure that we go all the way through the bottom. So I'll go ahead and select the extensions on both sides. It automatically defaults to cut, click okay. And now we have our curved surface for the torch cable. 
Now it's a, a fairly complicated surface because it is curving in two directions, but all I did, instead of trying to do this artistically or pushing and pulling or trying to make it the shape that I wanted, I did it functionally. I just defined where I wanted the cable to go with a sketch and then defined geometry off of that path so that it will conform to the outside of the cable. I didn't actually model the cable. I could have done that and then used it as a tool to cut, but I find it just as easy to visualize it and make the cut with the sweep tool off of a sketch. Now we need some zip tie slots to hold the cable in place and that's actually a lot easier than it looks if you know a couple of little tricks. So let me turn the sketch that has the center line of our cable back on and I'm going to create a construction plane. So I'm going to say construct plane along path and I will select this curve as our path. Now, where exactly do we want it? I want it in the center. So the distance here, it, distance type is proportional and the distance I will set to 0.5 and that will place that plane directly in the center. So now I will right click on this and create a sketch and I'm going to come up here to um, my sketch tools and under project and include, I'm gonna select intersect and I'm gonna click this inside surface and click okay. So now in our sketch, you can see we have this purple line that follows the surface there. Now I'm gonna hide the, the body here for a minute just to make this easier to see. And we're gonna create a couple of offsets from this. So O for offset. I want my zip tie slot down in the surface. I'm gonna put it in a half, a one and a half millimeters, so minus 1.5. And then I'm gonna hit, select this and hit O for offset again and I'm gonna bring this in minus four millimeters. So now we've got lines that are gonna be down under the surface, one and a half millimeters below the surface and four millimeters below the surface, giving us a two and a half millimeter distance between them. I'm gonna hit L for line and I'm just going to enclose this and click finish sketch. Now let me bring back the body here and so you can see we have this sketch with this area that is through the center of the through the center of our part. To actually cut out the slot, I'm just going to do an extrusion. So I'll select this again, hit E for extrude, and we'll do the same thing. We're going to do this symmetric extent type distance, the whole length, and I want this to be six millimeters because I know that's how much room I need for my zip tie. Okay. And now we have our curved path cut through the part for the zip tie. Now that's one right in the center. I also want them out on the edges as well. So I'm going to go up here and say, create pattern, pattern on path. And I'm going to select, I want to pattern a feature and I'll come down here into my timeline and select that extrude. And then the path is going to be this path. And I want to uh, do symmetric and I will set the extent. And now if I pull this out, you can see that it's going to uh, try to create two more of these. Now you can see the angle isn't following this. So orientation is set to identical. I want to change that to path direction. And now those, those duplicates of that feature will curve along the path. So I'll just pull this down to about where I think it makes sense, where it looks right on the top and bottom. Click OK, and now I have my zip tie channels cut through the part. Now, I'm looking at this, and I think having those as thick as they are is just a little bit too thick, so I can go back to my sketch here, and I can change this from four millimeters to minus 3.5 and that looks a little bit more reasonable and along this path uh, we'll just pull these back a little bit so they don't intersect the other geometry turn off the sketch and there we have three zip tie slots in that channel and these will be there to hold the uh, to hold the torch lead down and we can always go in here and say inspect section analysis and select one of these and kind of get an idea of exactly how those are fitting in there. And those look great. Now to finish this up, we need to put some curved channels in the sides of the back here. That's pretty easy. We'll just create a sketch on the bottom here 
and we will project this geometry down so we have a place to put it. Uh, L for line, I'm going to create a construction line. So X, that will be the, a center line across the bottom here. And that will give me a way to position my circles to cut the channels on the side. So C for circle. And I don't want this to be a construction circle. So I'll just put this in here. Let me put another construction line on the center here just so that we have a mirror. And mirror that circle around that. Now I want this point and this line to be coincident so that that'll hold that on the center line. And then I need to put some dimensions. So I know this is the cable diameter because I'm making a channel for the cable. And then I want the distance between these to be 21 millimeters because I know that there's a plastic block on the motor that's going to interfere. So I want those cables to be more or less touching the sides of it. So I will right click and say pick circle arc tangent and I will dimension between those 21 millimeters. And that gives me my positions for that. And so now I can just select these, hit E for extrude and extrude those all the way up. And now we have the channels for our cables. Now to put in the zip tie uh, channels in this, it's just as easy. We can actually go back to this sketch here on the bottom and I can just offset this the same way. 1.5 millimeters and 3.5 millimeters. Then we'll just select those regions and extrude. And to, for this extrusion, we need to move it up the side here. So for start, we will select offset and we'll offset this maybe, and I'll put in a number minus eight millimeters. That looks reasonable and a distance of minus six. Okay. And that now has given us channels for the zip ties. And we'll just do the same thing and create uh, another set of channels up near the top. Now we need to lighten this thing up a little bit. So I'll right click here, create sketch, and I'm going to create an offset from this edge. I have, and I don't want to do chain selection. So turn that off. So we're only going to offset just this one line, pull that down. And I'm just going to do this by eye. Pick a value there that looks okay. And then I'm going to put in some lines here to close that off. And then I'm going to come in here with a fillet and put a fillet on this corner of, I don't know, was it three millimeters look good? Yeah, that looks reasonable. And put one there. Great. And I'm going to put another fillet in this corner. Yeah, that looks fine. Now, right click extrude and we'll just push that all the way through and that looks pretty reasonable there and I'll go ahead and sketch up a rectangle here on the back great sketch and let's do a center point rectangle and I'll just come out here and touch these edges so that we get a guide and I'll just pick something that sort of looks reasonable right click extrude and push this in some amount that looks reasonable and that is all the geometry pretty much complete now the only difference between this part and this part is that i've gone back over it and added a whole bunch of fillets so there are multiple reasons why you'd want the fillets on here one is is just for aesthetics but another is for functionality i don't want a sharp edge along here so I will fill at that edge 0.5 millimeters. And I don't want the cable when it comes out the front here to go across a sharp edge on the plastic. So I'll fill at that maybe a millimeter, maybe two. 
yeah, maybe a millimeter. Same thing here on the top where it exits. And then the other reason to put in fillets is to avoid stress risers. A uh, section like this along the bottom here where we've got this you know, nice tall part that's gonna have some torque on it and we've got a nice sharp edge here, that's a place where uh, stress can cause a crack to occur over time. Same thing down here. And so when we come in and put fillets in places like this, those fillets then actually are smoothing that part out so that stress can't build up or concentrate in that corner. Now, depending on exactly where these things are located and how close they are and what order you do the fillets in, uh, it can be complicated to get exactly the geometry you want. So sometimes you have to mess around with the order. Should I fill at the end here first or should I fill at the side first or should I move this, uh, this zip tie hole a little bit so that I don't end up with a weird intersection. And honestly, that just requires some fiddling. But once you do that, you end up with a part that looks like this. And we can just 3D print this and take it out and install it on the machine. I'm printing this part in a Carbon X, carbon fiber reinforced PETG, just because I wanted the increased strength and stiffness in this application. Probably normal PETG or even PLA might work in this application, but I think the carbon fiber reinforced filament is probably gonna be a little bit more durable and last longer. Now I originally designed this part as a part of a set of experiments for using some dissolvable support material on the printer but I needed this done and I was running into a little bit of trouble getting the support material to print right, so I just decided to try without and it turns out it printed okay. There are a few areas on the part where there's a little bit of sagging in the overhangs, again, because I didn't really design the part to be printed without support, but all in all, I think uh, it's gonna be totally acceptable. You can see the characteristic rough surface finish of the carbon fiber reinforced filament but all in all, the print went okay, and I ended up with a usable part. Interestingly, now that the print's done, you can see the ooze coming out of the nozzle back there as it's just sitting, cooling down. This turns out to be the biggest challenge on a printer like this in printing with dissolvable support, but more on that in a future video. Well, in the end, I'm really happy with how this part turned out. I really thought I was gonna need dissolvable support material to be able to 3D print this because of the overhangs under here and particularly the really shallow overhangs that are occurring when printing this bottom zip tie slot. And in the end, it just did not end up being necessary at all. This printed just fine freestanding on the printer. There's a little bit of hanging filament underneath this back edge. If I knew I wasn't gonna need this support material, I probably would have just put a 45 degree angle on that, same as we did here on the bottom. Uh, but all in all, I think this is a totally usable part and I'm expecting it to, to wear and last a long time in this application. Probably never need to replace it. Well, did you enjoy that video? Did you learn something new? I, I know I always learn new things when I watch people work in a piece of software and I love that because I pick up new things that I didn't know how to do before or quicker um, and more efficient ways to do things that I was doing in the hard way and without knowing it. Do you know of uh, better ways to do some of the things that I did in this video? If so, jump down in the comments and uh, let me know. I love reading the comments on videos like this because I always learn something new. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And like I said, leave me some comments. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.